Let's take a look at putting an urban scene together in Aerialod using the files provided via the link in the description. This is covering an area of Manchester and Salford in the north of England. So first of all, we'll click on the load height image box in the top right, and we're going to add the Manchester Salford digital surface model. And I provided this data via the link in the description. It's LiDAR data, so it's high resolution. So I'm going to click open. And then we get a little model of an area which covers Manchester city centre, or at least part of it, and the Salford Keys area, where BBC have some of their headquarters. And then I'm going to add the colour map, or the colour image, by clicking on this square. And this is actually going to be a map, an Ordnance Survey map. And it adds on top and it gives it a 3D look. The perspective at the moment is going to be just as it is when you load up Aerial Odd. And that's the orthogonal camera view. So I'm going to change that to perspective. And you can see my other videos for more on how to navigate. But just as a reminder, if I right click and hold the mouse button down, I can spin the model around. I'm actually just going to change the size of the image. So I've got it wider. I'll make it 1920 wide and 1080 high. And we can start to make this look more interesting quite quickly. So one of the things I'm going to do is on the light settings on the left, I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to change the ground color by clicking on the gray color patch, change it to a lighter color. And then in the offset section on the right, in the map section, I'll change the offset to five, maybe more, let's try 10. And I'm just giving that kind of a little bit of a, a lift. So it's on a kind of plinth, I suppose. Let me change that to 20. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then I'm going to change the sky setting. So on the left hand side, when I've got all selected, I've got the sky setting. I'm going to change this to atmospheric scattering. It's going to look a little bit weird and harsh at first. So we're going to change some more settings just to see how it works. The angle of the sun in the top left, we'll change that to five. All right, that's looking interesting. I'm going to change the angle of the sun or the yaw angle of the sun, which is currently 50. I'm going to change that so it's coming from the west. But it's gone quite dark. So this happens all the time. You change the sun angle down and the yaw angle and so on. It looks dark. So on the left hand side, if I scroll down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the exposure value. Maybe up to about, ah, about nine or something. I'll go uh, and change the Rayleigh value. And the Rayleigh is to do with, um, well, partly explains why the sky is blue, but you can Google it. I will just change that value. So you can see you get a more kind of bright sunlit effect. It does give everything a kind of uh, or orangey glow. So when it's on blue, it will give it an orangey glow. That's sort of counterintuitive, but if you Google this and you look up a color wheel, you can see what happens. I'll pull a color wheel into screen very briefly, actually. So a little tip for you to understand the relationship between the Rayleigh color and the light color. So the Rayleigh color here is kind of a bluish, but on your map is going to be kind of orangey sun. And these tend to, what this is, it's kind of the opposite of what the color is on the color wheel. That'll help you understand which color you use in the Rayleigh settings is related to which color appears in reality. Okay, so that's a little bit of that. If I take the me down, it should, the MIE value on the left, it should just crisp things up a bit. If I scroll down, I'm gonna make my color of the ground actually white. Okay, that's gonna clear it up a bit. On the left hand side, I want to add a grid, but I don't want to add it to the actual map. And the grid spacing, when it says space, I'm going to make that 10 and hit enter. And then I'm going to change the grid width to 0 0.5. Let's try that and hit enter. Okay, so the grid spacing is a little bit too low. It's probably 10 meters, so I'll change that to 100. So it should be, in this case, every 100 meters. It depends what the units are in your data, but this is um, 
I think this was 50 centimetre resolution. I can't remember exactly, but that's not important right now. This is just showing you how to do these things. So I'll change the width of those lines to 0 0.25. And now we have a grid. I'll move it around a bit. So left mouse button held down. And let me just add a little bit of fog before we finish. If you find the fog on your machine goes black, that will be because of the graphics cards in your machine. And you may find that works on other computers as well. I'm gonna change the density of the fog. So it just comes as a big block. But if I move the decay value up a bit, what we get is a much nicer scene. Let me move the sun right behind like that let's see sometimes that you experiment with what's best yeah let me put the sun like that and then i'm going to also add a bit of a vignette like that maybe take the exposure up a bit and on the right hand side i'm also going to change the bounce setting so the diffuse i'm going to make 10 and the scatter 10 and hit enter so that's a little play around with an urban scene using a height map from lidar data and a color layer that's just basically a map. And if I click the button on the right, I can remove the color map layer. I get a kind of moody urban scene here. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can start to put together quite interesting scenes by playing with all the different settings. It does take a bit of time to get used to for sure. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do some really cool stuff.